The second half of the Master of Faster Tournament is ramping up here as we see two former allies try to tear each other down to climb the ladder. On the one side, we have the survivor of travesty, the not-so-gentle giant, the Lord of the Sky, Gregor! And on the other side, another former Dark Sider, the psychic model, the Medusa Maiden, Misty Treadwell! First, we're gonna look at Griger's deck. Griger plays the Reactor Monsters, dark machines who destroy monsters, spells, and trap cards when your opponent plays them, and deals a thick 800 points of damage when they do so. When he gathers the summon, spell, and trap reactors on the field, they can be combined into the Flying Fortress Skyfire, who can destroy multiple cards and do damage. His Earthbound Immortal, Chaka Chalua, can not only take the fast track to the opponent's life points, in defense mode, he locks the opponent out of their battle phase and deals 800 every single turn. His side deck brings in his fusion burn deck from the manga, which upsurges the amount of damage he deals and how easily he decimates monsters. No one is safe from the explosive rain, but maybe Misty can stand the fire. Misty uses reptiles to shrink and stun her opponents. The reptilane monsters drop your opponent's attack to zero and locks their battle position so you can crash into them with any monster. The alien cards place counters on the opponent's monsters that sap their attack and defense points too. Her ace monster, the Dragon Queen of Tragic Endings, is a difficult to summon 1900 attack monster that needs to deal damage to rip cards from the opponent's hand. But the two archetypes Misty runs makes that much easier to achieve. The aliens can be tossed out altogether for the more modern Reptilane support cards waiting in her side deck to take advantage of any monster with the life taken out of them. With two copies of their respective Earthbound, and each having similar deck sizes, it's a race to see which duelist gets off their combos first. Ready, set, duel! For the first round between Griger and Misty, Griger will be taking the first move, which is going to be very dangerous for Misty as this allows him to set up his reactor combos. He's going to start off his turn with the field spell Earthbound Geoglyph, which when a level 10 monster is on the field, cannot be targeted by card effects or be destroyed by them. This also allows him to treat synchro monsters as two tributes for the summoning of an Earthbound Immortal, and whenever a synchro monster does get special summoned, he can search for an Earthbound Immortal spell or trap card. He'll follow that up with a legendary normal summon of the Summoner Monk, a monster who A, switches himself into defense mode, and B, can pitch a spell card from Griger's hand in order to special summon any level 4 monster from the deck, which he'll use to grab the Mystic Tomato, who can float into other combo pieces, and he'll end his turn there. Not a bad start at all. For Misty's turn, she's going to activate the Sad Story Atrocious Day Continuous Spell card. With this face up on the field, during both players' draw phase, they reveal their card, and if it's a trap, it gets shuffled right back into the deck. So people are going to be bricking Misty, especially as we can see that she drew incredibly top heavy. So maybe this wasn't the greatest spell card for her to go into, but she's probably hoping that she gets more continuous spells because she does have her ace monster in hand. So we'll see how this plays out for her. For Griger's next turn, he does draw a trap card, so he loses his draw, but he still gets to normal summon his Trap Reactor Wi-Fi, an attack with its 800 and Mystic Tomato's 1400, leaving Misty at only 5,800 life points left. And while she really needs a trap card right now, she can't rely on one as Spirit Barrier gets shuffled back into the deck, and she has no monsters to play, so she ends her turn. She flips over her face down Code A Ancient Ruins, which has no effects at the moment since she doesn't have any alien monsters that she can go into. But if she gets one more continuous spell, her Tragic Queen will be live. Moving to Griger's next turn, he does draw another trap card, so he loses his draw yet again. But it's irrelevant as he sacrifices his Mystic Tomato and his Trap Reactor for the Earthbound Immortal Chaka Chalua with 2,900 attack points. He gets his Earthbound to the field first and attacks directly, leaving Misty with 2,900 points left. And she goes into the alien Mars, who cannot accomplish anything for her. So she summons it in attack mode, 
and simply ends her turn as Chakachalua can skip over Mars and attack Misty directly for game. What an easy victory for Greiger. For the second round, Misty chooses to go first. She's going to T-set and pass as many other duelists have done thus far. Greiger will set two cards in his back row before activating the Ready Fusion spell card. At the cost of 1,000 life points, he can special summon, quote-unquote fusion summon, a level 6 or lower non-effect fusion monster, and he chooses to bring forth the Vermilion Sparrow with 1,900, who he then uses to tribute summon the Summon Reactor SK, as Vermilion Sparrow, due to the effect of ready fusion, wouldn't have been able to attack and would leave the field at the end of this turn. Summon Reactor not only has 2,000 attack, but the first time while it's on the field that Misty summons a monster, she takes 800 points of damage. And if he uses that effect that turn during the battle phase, Summon Reactor can negate an attack. During the battle phase, Misty activates her face down quick play spell card A, Cell Recombination Device, allowing her to dump an alien monster from her deck and place A counters onto Summon Reactor equal to its level. So she's gonna dump the level four Stealth Buster from her deck. And when Stealth Buster gets sent to the graveyard, it can put two more A counters onto a monster on the field. So Summon Reactor now has six, and that will be a key component later in the duel. For now though, we move into damage step, and the face down monster on Misty's field was the Reptilane Gardena with 2,000 defense points. So this is a tie and nothing happens. Now, during the second main phase before Greiger ends the turn, Reptilane Yami activates from Misty's hand pitching itself in order to shrink Summon Reactor all the way down to zero attack. Why she would use that at this moment, we're gonna see later on as well. Moving to Misty's next turn now, she banishes the Stealth Buster from the graveyard in order to destroy any card on the field that has A counters on it, so she destroys the Summon Reactor who she bothered to set to zero with Yami earlier. And she also gets to activate A Cell Recombination Device from the graveyard. By removing it from the grave, she can add any alien monster from her deck to the hand as she searches Alien Grey before normal summoning Reptilane Quattle, a level 4 tuner monster who is going to tune the Reptilane Gardena for the level 8 Reptilane Melusine with 2,500 attack. And now she activates the Reptilane Ramification spell card from the hand. By pitching one card from the hand to the grave, which she chooses Alien Kid, she can now add a Reptilane monster and a Reptilane spell or trap from the deck to the hand, giving her two brand new cards that she's adding. She'll also follow this up with the card that she searched, the Reptilane Recoil Field Spell. This allows her to target a monster on her field with zero attack and destroy it and special summon a dark reptile monster from the graveyard other than itself. Also, whenever the opponent activates a monster effect, she can target a monster that the opponent controls that has zero attack points, take control of it, and replace it with a Reptilane token on their side of the field. For now though, Reptilane Melusine attacks directly for 2,500 and it gets met with the Fake Explosion Trap card. Fake Explosion can only be activated when the opponent declares an attack, and all of Greiger's monsters would be protected from being destroyed in battle this turn. However, he has none, so the attack goes through, leaving him with 4,500. But after damage calculation, since Fake Explosion was activated, he can special summon a Summon Reactor from the Hand or Grave, so he revives the Summon Reactor that was destroyed earlier. Misty goes into her second main phase and activates the Reptilane Lamia from the Hand, though. It's a level 2 tuner that will special summon itself by targeting the summon reactor and summon reactor gets dropped to zero again at the cost of Misty taking its original attack as damage. So she takes 2,000 points of damage and then another 800 due to summon reactor's effect, leaving her at 5,200. But now that Greiger has a monster with zero attack, Reptilane Recoil can activate its effect, steal the summon reactor, and replace it with a zero attack token, which Misty gives him in attack mode. She'll then attempt to activate the effect of the Reptilane Nyami from the graveyard now. If the opponent controls a monster with zero attack, Nyami can be revived from the grave. And this is met with the continuous trap card Basara on Greiger's side of the field. Once per turn, by sacrificing a monster, he can target a monster on the field with a higher level than whoever was tributed, destroy it, and deal 800 points of damage. So, 
he can sacrifice the token that was given to him and destroy the level 2 tuner, Reptilane Lamia, so that Misty cannot go into any other synchros, but she still gets Yami in attack mode. And she'll finally end her turn here, with both of their life points being nearly identical. Griger simply sets a card and ends his turn. Then Misty T-sets once more before entering the battle phase with Reptilane Melusine. But that gets met with a fake explosion trap card again. So Griger is down to 2,000 life points and then summons out the Summon Reactor SK from his hand. And Summon Reactor on Misty's side of the field activates since a monster on Griger's side of the field was summoned. So Griger is down to only 1,200, riding dangerously close to the safety line. She moves into main phase 2 as none of her monsters can destroy the summoning reactor though, and she uses the effect of the Reptilane recoil to destroy the zero attack summon reactor on her field in order to get back the level 4 tuner Coatl from the grave. This triggers summon reactor again, who is then met in response with the effect of Reptilane Melusine. What's per chain? When the opponent activates a monster effect outside of the damage step, Misty can target a face-up monster that the opponent controls and change its attack to zero. So Misty takes the 800 and summon reactor number two gets dropped to zero just like its predecessor. Now, using the effect of recoil, Misty will attempt to steal this summon reactor, but it gets chained with Basara, sacrificing the summon reactor, destroying the synchro, or it would have if it wasn't made of all reptile material, and the effect damage that would have ensued is now null and void. The turn comes to an end. It's Griger's move now. He draws and summons the spell reactor RE monster with 1200 attack, and since it has 1200, it can be equipped with Heart of Clear Water, who would allow it to not be destroyed by battle or card effects that target the monster. He won't be able to do any damage though, as Misty flips over the Continuous Trap Spirit Barrier. So long as she controls a monster on her field, she will never take battle damage. But her monsters will still be destroyed in the battle, so Spell Reactor swings over the Reptilane Yami, and Griger ends his turn at that with no other countermeasures. So Melusine gets to swing over and destroy the Spell Reactor, putting round two to an end. And Misty will win this duel. Round three, we're finally gonna see the tiebreaker between these two, and we hope that it's just as good as this last round was. Misty sets a monster and then activates the Code A Ancient Ruins Continuous Spell card before setting another card and passing her turn. For Griger's move, we're gonna see him activate the Nobleman of Extermination. Targeting a face down spell or trap, it will get destroyed and then banish. And if it was a trap card, both players have to go through their decks and banish all copies of it that they own. The face down card was a spell card though, but Misty's not too happy that she had her A cell recombination device banished because now she can't even activate its graveyard effects. Griger sets a card in his back row and then normal summons the trap reactor Wi Fi with 800 who will destroy a trap card on activation and deal 800, but it will not be negated, so that is very, very important to pay attention to. Misty will normal summon the Reptilane Coatl once again, and flip summon the Reptilane Gardener once again for, you guessed it, the Reptilane Melusine with 2,500, who will attempt to swing over the trap reactor Wi-Fi. And although the attack will go through, Fake Explosion will keep the trap reactor on the field. And this will be followed up with Diving Exploder from the hand. By pitching it during either player's turn to the graveyard, the original attack and defense of all monsters that are on the field gets swapped. And while this brings Melocene up by 300 points, it brings Trap Reactor up by 1000 points, so the damage will be reduced. And she completely misfires with the activation of Melocene, dropping Trap Reactor's attack to zero before it gets swapped, so it didn't go how she might have wanted it to. Griger takes a thousand damage though and now gets to play the summon reactor that was in his hand and Misty will end her turn for now. Griger normal summons the Mystic Tomato and that instantly gets met with the A cell recombination device pitching the Stealth Buster once again who will use its effect to put two more counters onto the trap reactor so that both reactor monsters have A counters on them and they get swapped into defense mode. Then Misty activates during Griger's turn the Reptilane Yami from her hand, targeting a monster that the opponent controls and switching its attack to zero so that Mystic Tomato will have Griger taking the full force of the Melusine's might. 
She draws and then activates her field spell, Reptilane Recoil, once again, before using the Stealth Buster in her graveyard to destroy the Summon Reactor, and then activates the Cell Recombination device that is in her graveyard in order to search for the Alien Warrior with 1,800 points. Now that Mystic Tomato is on the field with zero attack points, Nyami can be revived from the grave and followed up with the Alien Warrior for extra offense. The Melusine will attack the Mystic Tomato for 2,500, leaving Grigor near halfway dead, and it will float into a second copy of the Mystic Tomato. Alien Warrior is going to attack the Trap Reactor, who normally wouldn't be destroyed because its defense is equal to Alien Warrior's attack. However, it has two A counters. And when Alien Warrior battles a monster with A counters, it loses 300 attack and defense for each one, so the Trap Reactor is destroyed, and Misty ends her turn there. Grigor enters the battle phase with the Mystic Tomato, destroying the Reptilian Yami, but there isn't much else that he can accomplish, so he ends his turn already. Misty then normal summons the Reptilian Naga with zero points, but this allows her to activate Reptilian Recoil's effect, destroying it and replacing it with the Reptilian Quaddle that was in the grave. But she's not going to be performing a synchro with this because she's going to enter the battle phase instead, swinging over the Mystic Tomato number two with the Alien Warrior, bringing forth the last copy of the Mystic Tomato, who she then can swing into with the Melu Scene for 1100 damage. And this final copy of Mystic Tomato will summon forth the Blast Sphere with 1400 attack points as well. So Reptile and Quaddle swings into Blast Sphere for a suicide move, but this leaves Grigor's entire field completely barren. He top decks the Summoner Monk though, so hopefully he has a play he can make here. It'll switch itself into defense mode, but Melusine will attempt to switch its attack points to zero anyways. Then, since its attack was switched to zero, Reptilane Recoil can activate its effect, stealing it and then replacing it with a Reptilane token. So Grigor loses his only chance at making a comeback as he's forced to end his turn after wasting his normal summon. Reptilane Melusine enters the battle phase, destroying the token, leaving Grigor at 500, which is more than enough for the Alien Warrior to take this game. And Misty Treadwell has won the duel.